Hey folks, Nick Donatelli here and welcome back to the Houdini Firmograph series. So one of you requested to see how I did this effect from my series that I've been posting here, Tales and Meditations. Uh, the hexagonal linking effect, which was used in the microbiome episode. So in the final, you'll see that I have all these smaller dots scattered on top, but I'm just going to be showing you how to build out the base of this. All right, let's get into it. First off, you define the overall shape. So I'm going to drop a circle, changing the orientation to ZX, and I'm going to set the scale to 5 with divisions of 50. And this could be any flat shape here that you want. So now we want to break this into smaller sections. So drop a scatter node and a Voronoi fracture, wiring in the scatter to the second input. And I'm going to bring the count way down to like 30. And I'm going to uncheck relax iterations so you can see that the pieces are not as uniform. And there we go. That's going to be our basic fracture setup. Now we want to work with each shape individually. So to do that, I'm going to make a for each primitive loop. And at the bottom, I'm going to check on single pass. And I'm just going to scroll and find a nice big piece to work with for now. Next, I'll drop a center node, which is just a pre-built match size. And we're going to move this back later. So to store the amount we moved, we're going to drop a point pop and hook up the original geo into the second input. And I'm going to name this one mover because we're going to need to reference it later. And uh, before we dive in, I'm going to change the run over points to detail so that we have a detail attribute to access easier. So now diving inside, I'm going to make an import point attribute and change the input to first input. Now I'm going to make a constant hooked up to the PT num. So I'm just grabbing point zero and then I'll drag this import down and change it to the second input. Now, if you subtract these two, We'll have the amount we moved everything. And then I'm just going to bind export this to an attribute, which I'm going to name mover. And you can see if we hop out, we can see we have our detail attribute name mover. Now let's actually make the hexes. So to do this, I'm going to do another Voronoi fracture. But instead of a scatter node, I'm going to do a points from volume, which is usually, of course, used in volumes. But it works really well on flat geometry, too. So I'm going to change it from grid to tetrahedral. And you can see that we have octagons. Now the point separation here determines the spacing. So I'm going to make that 0.2, just so they're a little bit bigger. Next, I want to clean up these edges. So I'm going to make a measure, and which is defaulted to calculate the area, which is exactly what we want. So then do a blast node and type at area is greater than 0 0.035. Now, this is just the value I found with the point separation of 0.2. So if you adjust that, you may need to mess around and find uh, the different values that you'll need. So then I'm going to copy this and I'm going to change it to less than 0 0.034. And that's just going to kill all these small ones. And now we want to make this into lines. So create a primitive stop. And in the face hull tab, you can close U to unroll with shared points. And then we have our shape. Now to clean this up, fuse all the points together. Cool. Now we want to make one path so that it can grow out evenly. So for this, I'm going to use the shortest path method. So make a group named start and you can leave it as is so that it's selecting all the points and now make a second group called end and make sure it's set the points and then for this I'm going to enable bounding box and shrink that bounding box to about 0.25 and this is where everything will originate from so now I'm going to make our find shortest path node and I'm just going to select our start and end groups here. And I'm going to change this path to each start to each end. 
Now, this is cool, and we have paths originating from that center point, but I want to eliminate these long and even lines. So I'm going to break it up a bit, which I'll do with an attribute noise. And I'm going to change it to a float type. That way, it's just a black and white on the color value. So I'm going to bring the size way down of this noise. And then I'm going to enable remap. And I'll just drag this until we're happy and have some nice contrast. And then I'm going to make a poly cut, typing at CD equals zero in the cut points. And then I'm actually going to hop over back to the noise and just kind of tweak until I'm happy with how it's being broken up. And if you hop back down, you can see the difference in our shapes when you turn off and on this poly cut. You can see that it's actually like breaking up a good amount. So next, we're going to do the growth animation, which you can do in many ways, but I'm just going to keep it simple with a carve. And I'm just going to type in fit dollar f comma 1001 to 1080 comma 1 comma 0 close those parentheses and now as you scroll you can see that we have some animation so make another fuse just for good measures to keep things smaller and let's move this back into proper position so that it's not just in the center anymore so i'm going to make another transform and type in negative detail, open parentheses, quotes, dot, dot, slash, mover, parentheses, that's just grabbing our mover uh, point flop that we made earlier, then comma, mover, which is the name of the attribute we're grabbing, comma, zero, since it's, we want to grab the x position and close those parentheses. And now we did the negative there because we want to move it backwards from where it came. So now I'm just going to take this that we just typed and paste it into the Y, changing the 0 to a 1. And then again to the Z, pasting, changing it to 2. And now if I uncheck single pass, you can see that we have our whole shape growing on. It's a little bit slow, but um, now to get rid of these gaps, I actually want came up to the mover and make a transform node. And I'm just going to scale it 1.2 in X and Z. This might be a bit, um, a bit messy, but it, you know, for what I was going for, it was okay. You may need to find a different way to make sure that there's not overlapping points. And now you can see that everything grows on at once and it doesn't really move. So we want it to radially grow out. So it's not just all in one time. And then we want it to slide into place. So to do this, we're going to set up two attributes if you come up way before our 4H. One will be for the position, and one will be for the time. So I'm going to make a point pop and dive inside. Now we want it based on distance to center. So drop a distance, attaching it to the P. And it's defaulted to 0, 0, 0, so we don't need to change that. And since we know our circle radius is 5, we can just make a fit node and change it to be from 0 to 5. Now for the time, we're going to make another fit and change it from 0 to minus 60. And now if you bind export this, we'll call it time off, which we'll use in a second. But we're going to take that first 0 to 1 range we have and bind that out to an attribute called dist. Now if you come on down to the find shortest path, you can actually see when that happens, that the attribute goes away. And we want to make sure that it's transferred so we can reference it later. So do an attribute transfer and grab our dist and time off attributes. Now, all the way at the end of our loop, make an attribute promote, choosing our time off and taking it from point to detail. And this is just going to make it easier to grab and also find our average for each piece. So now drop a time shift and type dollar f plus detail and then grab that attribute promote grab the time off and zero and now you can see that it is growing out radially starting in the center and that where we set up that attribute with the minus 60 that's where you could adjust how much of an offset you want 
Cool, now onto the motion. So first drop a pack at the end of our loop. So these all move as one, and then make sure to transfer the distance attribute onto the packed point. Next, I'm gonna quickly cache this so that we can work faster and see the motion. And I actually did this before recording the tutorial, so you could just pause the video while yours caches for a second. Now that we have that, make a point to fob to set up our motion and start by binding in our distance attribute, dist attribute, and make a fit. Now we're gonna do another fit and attach this to frame. And here's where you can set how long you want the motion to take. So I'm gonna do 1001 to 1100. And now from that fit, do two more coming off of that. I do enjoy my fits. And now the first will be from minus 0.2 to one, and the second will be from zero to 1.2. And now that where that point two value is, that's just the spread, you know, the softness of how it's affecting it. You can plus or minus that as much as you want. Um, and now I'm going to hook the first one into the source min of the distance fit and the second one into the source max. So basically you're just adjusting, you're sliding along the distance value there. And now make it displace along normal node, attaching the P to the position and then make a normalize node and attach that to the N. This works because everything's just going out from the center. Hook in our fitted distance to the amount. And then if you attach this out to the P, you can see we have it moving. And you could adjust the scale in here to make them go further. Last thing for rotation. We're just gonna fit the distance from zero to 360 and then bind export that to a attribute, which I'm just gonna call rote for rotation. And now if you hop back out and make a primitive node, and then you check on do transform, I'm gonna type at rote in the Y transform. And there you have it. That's our hexagon growth setup. For this animation, you could for sure refine this. I definitely did in the render where you know you add a ramp into uh, the animation so that way you can ease things into the position and you could, based on the different uh, points, add some random rotations so they're not all rotating in the same direction or at the same speed. But I'll let you have fun with that on your own. You can download the project file for this on my site. As always, I'd love to hear from you in the comments if there's any effects you'd like to see tutorials for in the future. Hope you enjoyed this one and until next time.